Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, got Stacey and Joe with me. Shalom. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about testimonies and dreams. Yeah, um, one of the great things about testimonies is how they, um, they help everyone else. You know, scripture tells us that we are healed by the testimonies of others. And so um, we're definitely expecting a blessing to come from this testimony that we have from uh, Sister Joe. Yeah, Joe has been corresponding with our channel for a while. Um, and even back in the day when she sent um, one of her dreams mm -hmm. and, you know, she probably will tell us about that dream in this video. But since then, she sent several um, dreams by way of email. And a lot of them seem to be related to this channel. I don't I, it, I know everybody always interprets dreams strangely. You know, mm -hmm. every time I tell a dream, I expect somebody to give an interpretation that matches up with what I think it means. But they always come out wrong. So maybe it's just me. <laughs> but anyway, we ask you guys in the comments section to, you know, share with your thoughts as, you know, she talks about some of her dreams. Maybe you guys have an interpretation on it or maybe you have your own dreams that you can share down in the comments section. But. That's what this video is going to be about. Dreams, I guess. Yeah, and testimony. And Well, we want to start off. Uh, Joe, if you want, you can, you know, give your testimony by telling us about yourself. Well, I was, um, I was raised in a um, Christian home, and um, my grandmother was very instrumental in getting me to church all the time. And my grandfather played a guitar uh, um, for church, electric guitar he would play. And I, that's just fond memories I'd have of uh, singing and, and um, with the family and stuff at, at home. But as I got older, of course, you go in and out and in and out, or at least I did, of church. And um, <clears throat> about 2013 or so, it's 2014 probably, I had um, had an uh, urging, like a calling to get back into church, and um, I had started looking, we had started looking for a church in 2009 when I got remarried, my second marriage, and um, we uh, just really couldn't find anything, and um, I came across a video by, I think it was Jim Staley about Christmas one year, and I believe it was 20, 2014, and it talked about how Christmas was pagan, and I watched that, and, and I literally, I did not celebrate Christmas that year, but um, I really didn't have any support behind it. I really hadn't gotten back into church or anything. I wasn't actively reading scripture, and so I just kind of went back to the same old stuff, kind of like a dog back to its moment, I guess, but um, I went back to church and got heavily involved in a church um, and actually ended up becoming the worship leader at this church. Um, you know, all I just was offered to play the guitar because I, I knew a little bit how to play guitar and ended up becoming a worship. <laughs> and, um, so I about seven years. I was, I was later. <laughs> 2015, I ended up having a breast cancer scare, which got me on a health kick and, and learning about how foods help um, with nutrition and everything and, and cancer-fighting foods and stuff like that. And um, so by 2018, my father passed away, and I kind of, a lot of stuff came up, um, some ugly stuff from my past with my father. And um, I was kind of uh, um, deal with that, and, and it really got me more, even more involved into reading scripture and just studying it. And I had just come off of, um, it was 2020, and I was just finished with going through a year of reading scripture. You know how you have those daily things, those daily devotional things that they pop up every day and you read scripture right. and I had done the NIV version and I was going to go back and start to do the King James version 
And I had read the King James Version a long time ago, um, but I just was just getting really heavily involved in reading Scripture. And at the end of 2020, I don't know if you guys all saw all the conspiracy stuff that was going on with the world and things that, um, I, I won't mention anything here, but just a lot of stuff was just popping up, like people doing very evil things, especially in um, the movie industry and, and um, popular people and government officials, just all this really bad stuff that I just kept coming across and I was like what in the world is going on you know what can we believe what is true and even with the music that we had been playing in church I all of a sudden I got like this I don't know revelation I guess of how some of these churches and what they believed and some of the music that we were singing that they created because it was more like a pop you know, music type of stuff that we were playing in church. And um, I just, I just all of a sudden I was like, what is happening? And I distinctly remember just breaking down and crying and saying, Father, what is happening in this world? What do we believe? Who do we trust? And, and he said, in my spirit, I heard distinctly focus on me mm -hmm. and from that point on, I started, and I've never been a big reader before, but oh my goodness, I just, books were just um, the apocryphal books I went through. I studied all of them. Also, at the same time, I saw the, a video on what happened on September 23rd, 2017 with that sign in the sky, the Revelation 12, two sign in the sky, and that just really woke me up, and, and from, from that and just you know, feeling this calling to just focus on him. I was just like, just really started getting into scripture and, and all of these YouTube channels really started popping up on my radar and yours was one of them. And um, just kept studying with them and just trying to catch up on, you know, because everybody was so far ahead of where I was at, the t at that point in time because it was 2020. And it literally took me probably a couple of years from there to really just learn what I needed to learn through scripture and just with listening to your teachings and um, just going back over like, but like specific Bible studies where you just pulled out scripture that, you know, I've read it. I don't know how many times and it just never made sense. Like it does now. <laughs> right. And, and to be honest, um, you know, there was like, I, you know, you've talked about um, how we have to relearn our um, our false beliefs that we've been taught. And I can remember probably about two or three times I literally unsubscribed from your channel because I thought, <laughs> there's no way. <laughs> that can't be true. And then I'd go back and I would read it. And, and then I'd be like, oh, my gosh. It is true. And finding out about the Third Testament through you guys, and, and after reading that, you know, because my husband was like, what in the world is going on? I just felt this calling to start following the um, the feast day from Scripture. And he's like, what, are we Jewish now? And I'm like, I don't know what we are. You know, I just, I didn't know what was happening to me. And so the Third Testament, after reading that, just Literally, I was like, oh, my goodness, this is what's happening. It, it explained everything I was going through or I had been going through the last couple of years and or actually few years. And it just literally he pulled me out of religion and brought me to his scripture. And I have never felt closer to him than I do now. Wow, that's an amazing testimony, uh, especially coming from you saying that you were um, not so much as a, of a reader before until till now where you are even reading the book of life which is a massive book and yeah. that's, that's just amazing yeah I'm on volume 11 <laughs> <Out> wow <of> <laughs> wow you almost finished 
I am. And then I want to go back and read it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, that's, that's always a good thing. But woo, that's a big book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, one of the first dreams that I had, or actually the very first dream that I had is the one that I emailed you about because it stood out so um, vividly to me. And that was the one, and I don't know if you remember this, but because I think it was back in 2021. It was November of 2021. So I've got them all written down. And um, I dreamt that I was in a, in a room with a bunch of people. And a teacher came in. It was like we were in a classroom, but it wasn't like a regular classroom. And a teacher came in. And um, she was very gracious and, and um, kind and handed out a test. And said, "Okay, have you know, here's your test. I'll be back um, after that. You guys sit down and have and do your test, and I'll be right back." And she left the room. And I looked at the test, and I looked at everybody else, and I was like, "I don't even know what this test is about. I didn't. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know I hadn't studied for anything. I didn't know what it was. And I kind of just looked around, dumbfounded for a little bit, and everybody else was kind of starting to cheat." on their test and they have started trying to get me to cheat and I thought about it for a second and I just kind of sat back and I was like I didn't really want to cheat on it but I didn't even know what it was on and so about that point the teacher comes back and I went up to her and I said I, I am so sorry but I don't even know what this test is over and she graciously took the test back and she said, that's okay. Just study and prepare and I'll come back later. Wow. And that, that, that was the dream. And so I told coach about it. I'm like, what? I had this dream. What's this mean? And he said, watch this video. And he sent me, I think you sent me the way, the truth, the life, that video where it talks about baptism. Yeah. Anyway. One of them that talks about baptism. And um, I literally had just had my friend baptize me. Um, but after Passover, I had, I thought maybe there was some stuff that I'd done that, like, I was like, mm, I probably shouldn't have done that, you know, and I messed up. And so I, I rebaptized myself in the shower by myself because I really didn't think of there's nobody around me that is practicing, you know, what, what we're learning here and the real scripture. <laughs> and, um, so I rebaptized myself and I have had a load of dreams that said, like, I, I think I've shared many of them with you and Stacy and they're just, especially that time I had a bunch, they, they came to a little wall again you know, through the summer, end of the year, but they started up again. Um, the glass piece of tab, uh, the trumpet this, this, end of this year, it started up again. Hmm. Well, that's, a, that's, you know, that's amazing as well, because I know, um, in some of the comments as well as speaking to others, coach has often, you know, told people that, um, they could baptize themselves. And by you saying that, uh, it's just a great testimony that, you know, I hate to use this word that it works, but you know, that, um, it did work for you. Yeah. I I'd, I'd heard of people, uh, doing that from another channel. Um, the guy was talking about baptism. Matter of fact, it was two channels that all of a sudden started talking about baptizing themselves. Mm -hmm. um, one was just talking and the other one actually went down to the river and, and actually did it, telling everybody else to try it. But the thing about it, that, w that was after I believe Joe had done it. I believe she had done it first. Okay. So that would have been the third confirmation or the second confirmation okay. that people can baptize, baptize themselves. Right. Yeah. That's something I had never heard of, but I have tried it since. Okay. And, mm -hmm. you know, so there's something to that. Right. So. Yeah, I definitely would say there is something to it because I have never had dreams like the, what I've been having before. <laughs> yeah. So, and then, and then, so your dream then 
you say that you were given a test and that kind of reminds me of or did at the time still does reminded me of the the test that we all have to take you know we're basically in a study period now where we're supposed to be studying the law how to live according to the way our father wants us to live but then after this pole shift that's going to be the time when we have to take the test that's going to be the true test who, who those who know how to live under the law will be those that pass the test mm -hmm. if you don't know the law if you don't know how to live under the law you're going to fail and that's what's going to cause the majority of humanity to perish because they simply don't know what to do right. they don't know the cleanliness laws they don't know how to make connections with the angels that, that we we get that through the feast days and the and sabbath days and you know all of that is how we you know keep the connection in place but if people don't know that then they're just going to fall short they're just going to they're just going to fail the test so when you know you were telling me about your dream that's what i was thinking that somehow there was a disconnect between what you were supposed to be learning and you know what you was actually learning that's why it you know all praises to our father in heaven but that's you know what i understood is that there was a disconnect and that's why you didn't know what was you couldn't know what was on the test and by getting baptized again that actually to me it 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 would um um be a reconnect so that you could then start hearing the instruction that you were supposed to get and yeah so. absolutely that's absolutely i was not prepared and and probably still you know trying to get prepared but at least i feel like i know what i'm supposed to do now <laughs> What's what's studying his word and everything? Yeah. So, are you still having um, many dreams? Lots more dreams than you previously were. Yeah. So, another dream that I had, and this one was um, before I even knew anything about the electromagnetic field weakening. Um, this was before. I had this dream before, and I didn't even remember that I had it. I went, I was going back through my notes and um, read it, and this was after you came out with the class that talked about the pole shift, and that was the first I'd ever heard about what was happening with the magnetic pole shifting. And the dream that I had was that the electromagnetic field was weakening and and mind you this is before i knew anything about this stuff this is the dream i had <laughs> and um to protect ourselves we had to have jerusalem trees which i've looked up jerusalem trees and i don't know what they are so maybe somebody out there can help us but we had to have these jerusalem trees planted in the yard and we walked out to the garage we were looking for stuff and there was a car covered in suede hmm. and um you know as i'm learning more about what's going to happen with this um because the solar flare that's supposed to happen anytime now is what they're saying um that covering the metal with a suede will somehow protect like some kind of animal skin protect because it protects the animal from heat I don't know if that's the thing, but I have just that revelation from last night um, because I keep wondering why did I see a car with sweat like like animal skin on it. Mm -hmm. So it was it was a very bizarre dream, and I'm still trying to figure that one out. But yeah, Jerusalem trees and animal skin over metal, like because cars are made of metal, and they say. When the solar flare happens, it's going to heat everything up. And we live at the at the pole barn style house, so our roof is metal, our siding is metal, everything is metal. So I don't know if that's a um, you know um, I don't know. I don't know. So we had the the pole shift, and so but to, to protect ourselves, we had. Um, Jerusalem trees and all of the metal was covered up. Yes. Hmm. Yes. With animal skin. 
know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's, I, you know, I don't know. I, well, I looked up Jesus for Creed and um, I couldn't really find anything that was called a Jerusalem tree, but I don't know. Well, what, go ahead. Ahead. One, of the, one of the benefits, well, when you first mentioned Jerusalem trees, my mind immediately went to um, olive trees. I don't know why, but, you know, I immediately also think about the benefits that olive oil has, has for the skin. So yeah. I don't know if that has anything to do with it as well as, like you were saying about how the um, animal skin, animal hides protect the animals from the heat so i don't know if all of those have a connection uh i'm not very good at interpreting any kind of dreams <laughs> though you know but my mind did immediately go to olive oil yeah and i remember you telling me about the dream back in the day but since then um doing some studies in the scripture i was looking around um, doing a class and I happened to come across Esther chapter 2 and verse 12 where it was talking about the women going through the purification process back there and it talks about um, how they had the oil of myrrh and then they also had sweet odors but then when I looked up the um, the in the concordance or in the Hebrew to see what these sweet odors were it came across as balsam and since then, you know, we've started studying that what this what that balsam oil was and it turns out to be healing. That's that's the healing oil. You might remember Stacy had a um, a store called the balm and the blend. Right. Well, turns <laughs> out that balm was coming from this balsam tree. Mm -hmm. And um so it's a certain kind of oil and as in doing a study on that and, and even looking around seeing how I could get some of that oil there was a lot of uh, stores that would call it Jerusalem oil mm. oh yeah so maybe that's what it's talking about this healing oil um, yeah I definitely I think that was myrrh as well as balsam um, you know, you just can't put the essential oils on your skin. So I don't know, you know, maybe olive oil could be a carrier or it, I definitely think it has something to do with the sun and the protection. So um, yeah. definitely, you know, I think it would be worthwhile as to looking into these different types of oils. And it could have something to do with healing, too, right. because, mm -hmm. you know, the world, humanity will be in bad shape after this event takes place mm -hmm. um there'll be a lot of people with injuries and then we got the regular old illnesses that we'll have to deal with of course without any type of uh help from the medical industry they'll all be they'll all be all trying to save themselves if they're still alive they're not going to be worried about us at all right and you know so and then the the covering the skin the only difference I only thing about that is is covering metal now if you just say we were covering ourselves mm -hmm. that would make more sense but we're covering up the metal so I don't know what to think about that one mm -hmm. we, we have a lot of metal around here too um, uh, our whole house is covered in metal right mm -hmm. yeah that's very interesting yeah we do have a lot of pine trees white pine trees all over the property and um, um, we have autumn olives trees. I don't know if that, if that, I don't know how that would work, but um, they have get little green berries on them. The sheep love them. Mm. <laughs> but we have little bushes of those all over in the in the field. What they're called autumn olive trees. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. So, look that up. All right, you got. So, do you have another dream for us? Well, um, I think the one I just had the other day um, was a was a weird one. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, this was just um, last last Sabbath. Um, 
I had a dream that there was an actress in a play, and the, the um, set was like very extravagant, and um, it, it seemed like it would have been a movie, but I was made very aware that it was a play, and um, there was a lake with a dock, and that was um, one of the sets, and I don't really remember much about what the play was about. Um, it was like a group of friends, and we were trying to find something. That's the only thing. A lot of my dreams are like trying to find something. Hmm. And um, it was made very clear that I was a supporting actress, that I wasn't the lead role. I was a supporting actress. And um, I had literally just read that not in the book of True Lives and Teaching 3, um, I think it was 317, and it says, when your stage on this planet ends, I will lead you to other abodes, and thus I will guide you eternally on the infinite scale of your improvement. And that's um, from verse 30 then, the last half of verse 30. And I just remembered thinking, when I read that, I thought, that's weird to think like the, like we are on a stage and that it's very important to get our roles right and read, you know, read what we have to read and study. And um, just that that was like um, a supporting actress role, like I am helping support with supporting role in trying to, I guess, help others find um, and the truth, basically. So... I think even I had won an award in the stream for a sporting actress. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. That's that's good. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's one of the dreams that kind of, you know, reminded me of, you know, this ministry and how, in a way, you have been a yeah. supporting um, figure, mm -hmm. you know, of this ministry for, for a while. And, you know, so then I got to thinking, you know, praise our father in heaven, like I said, for for um, any insight and all insight that he gives us on these. But I started thinking that, you know, maybe it was time for you to actually start telling your story mm -hmm. and even, you know, um, sharing, you know, some of your uh, classes and what you've learned in, in, in the books and stuff. And I. And that's what actually started the idea of this episode that we're doing now. That's where this kind of came from mm -hmm. when, you know, start to think about you um, uh, supporting this, this, this ministry and even breaking out on your own to do your own ministry. Yeah, because, you know, a lot of people have not read the great book of life. And I can imagine all the... Um, I guess information that you have to share with others, you know, by, by um, from the Great Book of Life. Yeah. Yeah, there would be very, very few people that's actually read that entire book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you probably one in a, well, probably <laughs> one in said one in the two billions people that is actually I've never read it myself. Um, so. Yeah, I've had thoughts of um, of making an audio book. Now I know. Uh, the one where we where we get the um, audiobook for the Third Testament has started um, some of the teaching from the Book of True Life on their audiobook. But I think they only go up to like 56 or 57. And I really, when I was trying to read it, I, I was like, I like to listen while I'm driving, you know. Um, it just, it helps me to, you know, I feel like I'm, studying as I'm just sitting there doing nothing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I like to listen to um to the audiobook. I I I really am into listening to the audiobook. So I wish I really wish I would have had that to listen. So I thought about just completing and doing like a whole series of um the teachings so that people could actually listen to it. Um, like you can in the Third Testament, which was very instrumental in me finding, you know, myself in it. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've probably listened to that, the Third Testament, probably 50 times or 
or more. more. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, audio books are something else, especially in these times now. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, like you say, while you're driving, even while you're sleeping. Yeah. You know, you can turn on the, the audio and our father will wake you up. Mm. to hear verses that you need that you need he'll mm -hmm. wake you up in the middle of the night mm -hmm. and you'll hear a verse that you need and then you know you'll fall <laughs> back to sleep and wake up thinking about that same verse you know you get up and study on it you know so i've had i've had it where because we do um a lot of our audio books um coach will put them on before we um retire for the night and i've had it where we have been listening to Third Testament Shepherd, Shepherd of Hermas, and I wake up and I hear something, you know, that convicts me of something that I've done, and I'm like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> the father is definitely he definitely getting on me so yeah it definitely works like that i believe <laughs> yeah. so to have that whole book in an mm -hmm. audio form would be a great great um, asset yeah mm -hmm. to the to the to the kingdom definitely mm -hmm. but um but what what you know one dream that you shared uh with me a while back um was really really interesting and I was wondering if you would go ahead and, and tell us about that one it was the dream where you had the preacher the baby that was dropped off at your house and then you had the preacher oh yeah um, yeah it was my actually my former pastor <laughs> um, at the at the church where I was worship leader um, he was <laughs> He was involved in some kind of, it was like a magic show or something. And he was like out in Las Vegas, like it was a big to-do. And his kids were all going, and they didn't want to take the little kids. So I was babysitting the the other children, and their children. And so they could go, and I guess it was like an overnight thing because it was far away. And they would be back the next day. Well, ended up, they had left another kid with me that I didn't know, one of their children that I didn't know was there. And I thought I was only supposed to watch the one, and and I was very upset because I was like, the child had been left, like, in a car or something, and was barely breathing. So I had to resuscitate. There was another lady there helping me, but it's like I was, I was trying to revive these kids that, I mean, it was very, very strange. <laughs> yeah, and so you had the one child that was dropped off, and the other one, you kind of found the child, like it wasn't placed in your care, and but all of the adults were going off to see the minister as he performed the magic tricks. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. And see, that kind of reminded me of, you know, the scripture that talks about how um, when we go through this transition, um, you will have a lot of ministers that will be given powers. You know, they're going to be able to bring down fire from heaven. They're mm -hmm. going to be able mm -hmm. to do all of these um these acts perform all of these miracles. Mm -hmm. You know, we hear in the scripture how it talks about the lawless one would have all of this power. But you have to understand these are spirits. Right. And so there will be several people that will have this ability to do all of these miracles. And so that's what I was interpreting her dream to be is how her former pastor would all of a sudden be able to perform all of these miracles. Sort of like magic. Magic. Yeah, it would be mm -hmm. considered magic. And the adults were rushing off to see this this and leaving their children behind mm. and so joe will be responsible for taking care of these children as the adults rush off to see this magic right mm -hmm. you know and it she really didn't get into what actually happened to them but you know to me it's kind of pointing to you know how they're going to be kind of led to their instruction to their destruction leaving the kids behind 
that's going to be one of the one of the main responsibilities of those that survive this tribulation is actually taking care of these children that are going to be left behind. We read that in the scripture that there will be a lot of children left behind um, as the adults go off. Right. That's why the, the Messiah stressed so much that, you know, the, the kingdom is about the children. It's going to be the children that's going to be the first to go into the kingdom. And so now you have to have someone who uh, knows the law, who's actually active and practicing the law to be able to teach them. Yeah, to take care of these children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that's why, you know, they were left with her as they went off, you know, being mm -hmm. caught up in this magic. Uh -huh. I have had a lot of dreams about taking care of children. Wow. It's a lot of dreams about, and it's like my friend's children. My friend, like it's, it's been about my friend's children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm taking care of them. Yeah, we, we've, we've had a lot of those too. Um, like uh, at one point, my brother and my sister and one of the neighbors all dropped their kids off at our house. Yeah, and I was telling Coach, yeah, we were just talking about it, my, was it yesterday? About how children um, would be led here for us to take care of them. And I was like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> but he was like, you know, I'm telling you, get yourself ready. You're going to be taking care of a lot of children. So Yeah, because we keep having the dreams <laughs> about the, the, the kids coming here. Right. And, you know, even showing... You know blessings mm -hmm. from from you know the children right mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. like one dream that i had where i was in this plant i barely can remember the dream that i was in this this um um this big industrial complex and i was kind of lost and i was you know trying to trying to get out of this place but it was a child there and it was only when i you know started focusing on the child and you know the the, the well-being of the child it was then that the child actually led me out wow. to safety wow yeah it was like i needed the child needed me but i also needed the child in order to get out of that mm. place wow wow that's amazing and there, there i mean we've had lots and lots of dreams about kids um like I said, it's the neighbors' kids, the 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 uh, family member. family members' kids, just a bunch of dreams. But that's probably been the most dreams uh, <clears throat> is about these kids, and I believe that's related to, like I said, you know how we're going to have to take care of these kids as their parents have gone off. The parents have gone off and doing their thing, but the kids will be willing and and able to make the transition you know, back to holiness than the adults will. The, the adults are going to want to stick with their traditions and stick with their stuff. Well, you know, out of sight, out of mind, all you got to do is, you know, take that stuff away from the child and you ain't got to worry about him, you know, trying to reinvent Christmas. You know, he don't even know what Christmas is. He don't remember it. Right. Mm -hmm. But the adults will, so they'll have a much harder time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you had a, the dream about the plane crash. You want to tell us about that one? Mm -hmm. oh, um, I gotta remember. Um, well, um, the weird one, that was kind of a series of dreams on that one. I'd been having dreams about one of my aunt and uncle, which actually they're not my aunt and uncle, they're my mom's cousins, and they were always, so we just called them aunt and uncle. Um, but they were my, let's see, how did that go? My, my, we were supposed to go find them. Um, we were, my husband and I were remodeling a house, which we've done that a lot. So that's like a thing so, <laughs> in real life. <laughs> and um, we had bought a house and it was across the, the state line and I, I was thinking it was Tennessee and um, my aunt and uncle had um, a place in, I think it was, um, they were in Tennessee. I thought the house was that we were remodeling in Kentucky 
and they were just across the border in Tennessee, and, and she told me it was Columbus, Tennessee. And so they wanted us to come over there, and they said, it's just a short drive, but you have to have these special headlights to get there. And the special headlights, um, he said, well, I can get somebody to install them, but it's going to take five Wednesdays before he can get to them. Which I was like, what? <laughs> Why does it take so long to get these special headlights or else you get pulled over by the cops is what he said. But I don't know. But, so I said, oh, we can't wait that long. Let's just go. So we chanced it to go over to this Columbus, Tennessee. And then it evolved into my aunt being a stewardess on a plane. And she... It, it, it's like I could see her thoughts. I wasn't on the plane, but I could see what was going on. And her her flight was her plane was going down, and she was trying to secure everybody and help everybody else. And she finally sat down, and the plane crashed into a water, some type of body of water, and it was sinking. And she, I could feel her thoughts, and she was panicking at first, and then she was, went to calm herself down and so she could focus, and the water was coming up, coming up, up, up her neck and everything, and she figured out, she, she calmed herself down enough to find a door, to open the door and get out, and the water come up over her head, and then I woke up. Hmm. Wow. So, is your aunt and uncle, are they still living? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you got to remember, the dreams are never about the person. You always have a, a person in the dream, but they always represent somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's never the same person. Like, if, if, even when you see the dreams fulfilled, it's always somebody, somebody else. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. but the, mm -hmm. so the the people in the dreams are just representations of right. somebody else. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's where a lot of people, you know, go wrong with mm -hmm. it when they have a dream, and they um they see a certain person doing a certain thing in the dream, and then they wake up thinking that that person is going to do that thing, mm -hmm. but no, that's that person is always represented by somebody else. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm not figure that one out. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you are you are definitely having a lot of dreams and you know, I'm so thankful for the third testament because I didn't know um that that was one of the ways that the father communicated with us, you know, through our dreams, um and intuition and our conscious. Um so you and him are definitely having a lot of conversations. <laughs> there have been several times I woke up um, especially this year that I've been having them and I'll know that I've had dreams or I've had a dream and there were probably about two or three nights I knew I had dreams but I could not remember what they were and it just I felt like I was exhausted during that time it was about a week of just I knew I was having a bunch of dreams and it I guess it was wearing me out physically I don't know if that's even a thing, but I felt so exhausted that week, and that's when I know I was having a lot of dreams. It was very strange. Wow. Yeah. And there's something about this season, too, that, you know, a lot of people talk about dreams in this season. And I believe that's why they pile so many holidays up around this time. You know, it's because, I don't know, it's something, something going on behind the scenes. I don't know if we're quite ready to understand it. But, you know, there's something about this season that, you know, a lot of dreams start to come about, you know. And then, of course, we allow the holidays like Christmas and stuff to to separate us, you know, and, and shut down those dreams. But I believe we could sometime we could somehow avoid those holidays. Then the dreams continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. yeah. I could definitely attest to that. The last two years, that's what's happened to me is during this time. Were you always um, a person who who dreamed, or is this something new for you? 
this is something new. I can remember dreams from, <clears throat> like, as a child. I'd have um, some strange dreams here and there, but not like this. I'm not, I've never had dreams like this before. Mm. Yeah. Wow. And it, it's, it's something, like, like she said, it started when she got baptized again. You know, and we know that our father communicates us with us through dreams, intuition, and what's in our conscious. Mm -hmm. And you know, so it's all about making that reconnection with him that I believe the dreams start. And then it's just a matter of not getting cut off, not doing something that's going to separate us from him. And that's where the law comes in. Mm -hmm. You know, once we learn um, to live in the law, we don't do things that creates a barrier and shuts down our dreams for us. I think that's what the enemy's job is, is to put all of these stumbling blocks in our path that will take us off track, you know, so that he can keep us, you know, enslaved to him instead of allowing, you know, our master to be the Lord of our life. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And as long as we can, you know, stay on track, we can stay having dreams. You right. know, and intuition and, you know, hearing from our conscience. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What? Yeah, I had um, one dream <clears throat> that was a real, real short one. Like, all I saw was my one, we've got, we had just started a sheep um, trying to get some sheep, um, a farm. And so I've only got six. I had the two adults and then um, four little lambs. And um, I saw one of my ewes, my adult ewes, and she was skinny, like skin and bones. And it reminded me, that was all the dream of, I just remember, I saw her and she was completely skin and bones. And it reminded me of that dream that Joseph um, interpreted for is it Nebuchadnezzar when um, he had this um, dream about the seven years of famine and the seven years of plenty and um, one of the questions I've had for myself is do I have enough am I prepared you know am I prepared especially for these next couple of years because we have a sabbatical year and a jubilee year and um, and I'm wondering if that was um, an indication as um, maybe I better stock up for another year, or <laughs> maybe that's one year. You know, I don't, I don't know. That's kind of the way I would get at it. Like maybe that's an indication that I need at least another year of stocking up. I don't know. Yeah. Or a year of a famine. I don't know. Well, the thing, the thing about it. Well, when it, when the scripture talks about the famine, of course, it's talking about a famine of the word. Not so much as a famine on food, but, you know, you know, as people try to, you know, um, get the knowledge of the scripture, there's going to be a very few people that's actually going to have any knowledge of what our father really expects us to do. But to me, when I was, you know, reading that dream, it was really talking about a year of having a year worth of stuff stored up because. We are, and, and the reason why I, I believe it's really only a year because we um, the pole shift is really going to be a, a one day event it's actually only going to the whole thing is going to last less than a day and then it's going to be over the thing about it at the end of that day the whole planet is going to be changed everything is going to be different every building is going to be knocked down everything is going to be destroyed but we can start to recover. It's not like it's going to, you know, keep, you know, stuff is going to or it's going to last for a long time. Once once the shift changes, it's going to happen overnight. And then once we wake up, then it's a matter of, you know, recovering and, you know, getting back. And so if you have just a little bit of provisions um, just to get you over that period to where you could actually start growing stuff again, mm -hmm. you know, you know, because we, we thought about storing up food and three years worth of food is a lot. That's a lot of food. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. you're talking tons of food, especially for us. It's, it's six of us. And, you know, you're talking about tons of food for yeah. six people. Right. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I don't know. I was thinking, you know, in that one that he's kind of telling you that you're going to have to have something to get over that that hump that and it's you know really only one year to um that you need protection through that through that hard time because it, it the way i see it it's going to happen in in the winter time anyway sometime around you know christmas time yeah yeah, yeah. and you could imagine how treacherous is going to be for you know we've just lost the whole world have just lost all of our possessions all of our material possessions all of our houses are gone you know and surviving that winter is going to be really tough yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah mm-hmm. well it's definitely been um you know, like I said in the first thing, your your testimony and your dreams have definitely um, definitely encouraged me. Um, you know, the more you get, the more you share. So I would definitely say continue to share them. Um, you know, I do hope you consider continue to consider the audio books. I think they would be great. Um, and you know i just want to say thank you thank you for you know being a great supporter of this ministry as well as our family so we appreciate you so much well thank you guys um for sharing what what father's placed on your hearts it's just been such an eye-opening last couple of years for me um yeah because i just it's been tough it's been real tough with the family and um, just trying to separate from those traditions that we've we've just really been so instilled in us from birth, and um, trying to step away from that has been really tough. And um, pretty much going it alone right now. But um, at least my mother is kind of on board with me, and she's doing real well. She's not been real healthy, but. Um, She's doing a lot better these, seems like, these last uh, couple of years. Um, and it's just been, it's been quite a ride. And so I want to thank you guys, too, for for um, for your channel and uh, the stuff that you do for all of us. Thank you. Well, all praises to the Most High. Um, you know, like you said, it does get it gets real lonely i think coach told me the other day you need to get you some friends yeah. <laughs> so it does get lonely it does get lonely around here you know uh you know i think more so for the women because we're just used to having uh female companionship around uh but you know i do understand this why the separation is needed so you know a lot of times i just have to encourage myself and you know often talk to myself uh you know <laughs> becoming my own friend so you know i do appreciate you guys when you leave comments and and you know we knowing that you guys are, are here for us that we are a family yeah i think it, like i say females may need that a little bit more than you know than the men is that companionship especially when things you know start to get a little bit rough if you guys can have each other to lean on a little bit mm-hmm. you know <clears throat> yeah because i think yeah. we are built a little bit different we kind of <laughs> <laughs> built for the war but you know our sisters may need each other to to lean on every once in a while so absolutely so we thank you for you know spending this time with us and you know, letting your testimony go out, you know, for the world to hear and for them to be encouraged and to be edified. Well, yes, that is the most important thing is to encourage others because, um, like you said, we are feeling very alone. Um, We know we're not, but um, as far as human intermingling, um, it's very 
very, um, it's a, yeah, you're alone. And, um, and just, but you know, like you said, it's necessary. I, I believe it's very necessary because um, if we had somebody else that wasn't completely uh, following, you know, what they, you know, they may be persuading us to do things we shouldn't do. So um, I think it is uh, very necessary for us to um, be alone for, you know, until we figure this out and, and can get our studying in because, you know, what, what would we be doing if, if we had friends to go run around with and do this with and that with and we wouldn't be studying like we need to, so. <laughs> yeah, and like you said, they, they would encourage us to do other stuff too, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's the world we live in. Um, right now, I mean, it's coming to an end. You know, all of those who prefer unrighteousness, you know, they not going to make it. But, you know, until then, we got that to deal with. Anybody that's not walking in the faith is going to, you know, steer us astray. That's just going to happen. So I believe that's part of our father's plan is that he keeps us isolated from them, from, you know, people that would encourage us to do wrong stuff and get us in trouble. Right. You know, so <laughs> being alone is kind of part of it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. But we got each other. <laughs> yes, we do. You guys have been such a support to me, and I appreciate you guys so much. All right. Well, you can keep us posted when you start to do your audio books. I don't know if you're going to okay. put them on your channel or whatever, but when you post them up, definitely, okay. you know, uh, let us know about them so we can come over and subscribe to your channel and and everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm very computer illiterate, so for me to do something like this is going to be a very big challenge. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Well, think about it. if you did something like that, he would definitely help you along the way. It's not. Right. Yo, know, he. he it, it, it's so needed that you know you would get yeah. so much angelic help doing it. Mm -hmm. that, you know, it'll mm -hmm. probably flow really, really smoothly. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, well, I'll, I'll definitely, I started, um, I just started where I was at with my teaching, you know, what teaching I was on, and so we'll see how it goes. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Sister Joe, we're going to, um, we're going to um, close this out. Um, okay. Once again, we thank you for joining us, and uh, we hope you have a wonderful um, Saturday. Yes, you too. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Godspeed. And... Yes. Shalom. Bye-bye. Love you.